Nearly half a million people are preparing to march on the nation's capital this weekend to fight for gun control and school safety measures, and many of those marching will be students. The event follows last week's nationwide walkout in response to 17 people killed during the school shooting in Parkland, Florida. Students from nearly 3,000 schools walked out of their classrooms and marched in a political fight. Survivors mobilized and created the Never Again movement that's now spreading across the nation. Their goal is to start a discussion about gun control, despite some politicians who say it's not the time for a debate. Some of the survivors spoke out about Nicholas Cruz last night on 60 Minutes. Florida prosecutor announced today that he's going to seek the death penalty against um, Nicholas Cruz. And I just want to get your thoughts on that, uh, Emma. Good. Good why? Good that he's seeking the death penalty for Nick Cruz. Uh, I don't want to think about Nick Cruz. I think the more we think about him, the more he wins. That being said, I, I, in a way, I disagree with Emma. Let him rot forever. I want to see him rot forever, as Cameron just said. But when we pursue the death penalty, this will be kept in the media for much longer. I just don't want him to get what he wants. I want him to suffer, no matter what. The death of one person, as terrible of a person as he is, cannot outweigh the death of the 17. Raise your hand if there are guns in your house. I feel safe because my father has a gun in the house that he can use to protect our family. And my family lives on the principle that there are some guns that are made to protect your family from anyone who might come in and try to hurt them. And there are some, some guns that are made for war. Joining us now are two of the leaders of the hashtag Never Again movement, David Hogg and Emma Gonzalez. Welcome to you both. Good to see you again. Nice to see you. Um, Emma, I want to ask you about that speech that you delivered in the days after the shooting. I call it the we call BS speech because you called BS on a number of issues. And at one point during the speech, you said that we are the children, we are the students that you're going to be reading about in your textbooks. You both come from a long lineage of student protesters who helped desegregate lunch counters, who protested the Vietnam War. How do you see your role in all this? I feel like we're going to be like that in a way. Like, I don't want to compare ourselves to those incredibly influential people, but we have had a really, really dramatic impact on the United States already in such a short period of time. And I can't see how this wouldn't be in the textbooks in the future. Like, I'm just looking at this realistically at this point. We're going to make this change. Then again, I, 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 there were American kids dying in Vietnam, and there's American kids dying on our streets. That's 1968. More people have died in America as a result of gun violence than they have fighting in war for America. So you all managed to keep this in the part of the national conversation, which is alone an accomplishment because, as you know, mm -hmm. we've had other mass shootings before, and there's an expectation that we will discuss and then it will fade away, and so far it has not. Last week, Vlad and I covered the student walkouts across the country. And I got to tell you, I was so impressed with the behavior of the kids, especially here in New York. Yep. Um, so organized, so disciplined, so passionate. And this is all sort of coming from you. As you watch the coverage, I wonder just how you felt. I felt really empowered because yeah. I knew that those kids are walking out of school, but they're going to be walking into the polls come November. Yeah. And that's where we're going to see this change. Because if these people want to continue being awful people and allow uh, just greed and corruption to corrupt them, they can be on the wrong side of history. That's their choice, but we're certainly not going to be. Mm -hmm. You know, both of you have, have received death threats because of what you've been doing. You've been speaking out. You call yourself the mass shooting generation. You hope that your school will be the last school to face such a horror. Um, but how does that make you feel when you know that there are a lot of people behind you, but there are also people who want to harm you or who say they want to harm you because of what you're saying and there's always out. been people who are going to want to harm us there's always been people who are going want to harm me like even before this as possible i could have had a stalker in the future because i'm you said a because you're woman. a woman yeah like there's a lot of there's a lot of problems that young women have to face and women in general have to face and i'm not going to pretend that this like opened my eyes to a cruel and harmful world like we knew about what we, we we went through drills we we were told that we were going to go through shooting drills that they might shoot off blanks in order to make us take it seriously we were going to take it seriously mm -hmm. or at least we were there are some people who joke about that stuff because they don't think that it could really happen and then it, when it does that's when they sober up and I but when it comes right down to it we already knew that this world was going to be tough so getting death threats like that doesn't really phase us. I wonder how you feel about the role of the NRA in this conversation. Um, 
you know, because the NRA can certainly tap into some negative feelings. I'm not going to say that the organization feeds into conspiracy theories, but certainly um, they can ignite the kind of negative coverage that Vlad is talking about. So what do you make of them? I think it just goes to prove what, exactly what they are. I don't think NRA members are bad people at all. Yeah. I think they're responsible gun owners that want to become politically active and make their voices heard in this democracy, and I think that's an excellent thing. I think the problem comes in when it's people at the top of this organization that don't listen to their constituents and continue to scare people into buying more guns, creating more violence, so they can scare more people and sell more guns. The people at the top of the NRA are no longer working for the people that are in their organization. They're working on behalf of the gun lobby. Mm -hmm. The gun lobby. Mm. And when you talk about the NRA and you make a suggestion like that, what do they say to you? What does the NRA say to you Have in response? Have they been reaching out to you? I know that you know we had a representative show up at the town hall meeting right. that you guys participated in, but has the organization been reaching out to you guys? The way that they've been reaching out to us is basically threatening us. They've threatening been, you. They've been you, instigating things, and then when we reply, they like shy back away. Like They can dish it out, but they can't take it. Right. You know? mm. Oh, that's, that's really, really fascinating. Yeah. So, listen, there's like a mom in me, right? <laughs> well, I am a mom, but... <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, you are a mom, yeah. I think about this journey that you guys have been on, you know, from the mass shooting to the immediate uh, coverage. You guys in particular, I think, had the emotional fortitude to stand in front of the cameras at a time when many of them, I'm sure your classmates were not ready. And so you became the people that we go to. And, you know, as members of the media, if somebody talks to us once, we come back over and over and over again. And you have stood there in front of the cameras. And now, you know, directly into sort of lobbying lawmakers, pushing uh, uh, students to, to take to the streets. The mom in me wonders about how you're coping. Have you had a chance to sort of digest the, and deal with the trauma? I think, I don't know if Emma agrees with me on this, but I think this is our way of coping, working together and being around our friends in such a time of horrible tragedy and suffering and making sure that this doesn't, that nobody else has to go through this suffering and at least try to make sure that they don't mm -hmm. is our way of coping to ensure the safety and future of many Americans, but the fact that 3,000 people, essentially the equivalent of our entire school pop student body, has died since the time of our shooting as a result of gun violence is a testament to the serious issue that we have in this country. Um, well, David and Emma, we are so proud to have you here. We're proud of the work that you're doing. Yeah. Um, and the only thing we can say is we encourage you to keep doing it. Thank you very much. Thank you you are going to be the kids we read about in textbooks. Thank you.